from Bitcoin to biotech, it's an exciting time to be alive when the tech industry is constantly producing new cutting-edge innovations. That's where tech journalism comes in, striving to keep up with the entrepreneurs in this bustling space and follow the money trail. Today, we dig into the job description of a tech journalist and find out what it takes to be keeping tabs on the startups making noise in the European tech market. Let me introduce you to our expert for the day. Michael Stothard, I'm the editor for Sifted, which is a new media publication backed by the Financial Times, reporting about tech and startups in Europe. The main thing I do is commission articles and edit articles, um, so standard job of an editor. Uh, I also have a slightly different role at the moment because we are a Sifted, we write about startups, but we also are a startup. Um, for anyone who's worked at a startup will know that pretty much everyone does everything. Well, the interesting thing about the world of startups is that it's very undercovered. There aren't very many journalists that look at this world in a serious way, which is good and bad. It's good in the sense that you can really make an impact um, by just going out there and talking to people and there are stories that are just there for the taking in the way there aren't with you know, big political news. Uh, on the other hand, there's not much information out there. So you really need to be on the ground and making those contacts and talking to people because you can't half ass it. Well, the other big challenge is that these companies are very small. So making sense of it is difficult because how, you, how do you pick winners? You know, if there's 18 Latvian uh, bio plant startups, um, which one do you profile? Which one is going to be the exciting one? What's the one that investors are really taking seriously? It's really hard. These are all pre-revenue companies. Often it's just one or two people with an idea. It's like extraordinarily difficult. Um, and sometimes you feel, God, am I just writing about some totally no-hoping random company? Uh, so it puts an extra onus again on sourcing and being really part of this world. Yeah. Speaking to the VCs, speaking to other people in the sector, speaking to you know, the corporate innovation units um, to try and find out kind of who's the real deal and who isn't. We noticed recently that there were lots of startups in the field of uh, analyzing your blood, uh, which is very much like uh, Tyrannos, uh, the US startup, which said it could analyze your blood with just a pinprick and actually couldn't and collapsed in a spectacular fashion. But now there are all these European startups who have come and said, well, we know there's a market now. We know people are excited about it. We just need to make the tech work. So something like that, when you notice one or two startups entering a new and exciting field, that's a nice story. You can tie all those things together and you can do a trend piece about you know, something that is exciting that's going on. Similarly, what from the other end, that's kind of bottom up. From the other end, top down, it's interesting what the venture capitalists are interested in investing in because it's not always the same thing. What entrepreneurs want to do and venture capitalists want to fund is not the same thing. So those are also other trend stories that can be quite nice. I've been surprised by uh, how many people in the journalism world can't see a story, which I always think is kind of a prerequisite for being a journalist, just seeing that top line. Um, but it's a bit something maybe you can't teach or at least comes with experience. It's a little kind of magic dust of like, what's the thing that's going to grab the reader? Um, but combining that with someone who's well integrated already into this world. Um, and that is actually surprisingly difficult to find. The best part of your job is when you commission and then edit a real tour de force brilliant 5,000 word piece um, and you can convince yourself that you're you know working for the New Yorker and you're know, gonna win a Pulitzer Prize. Um, the really hard-hitting journalism that you feel will make a difference, will hopefully annoy someone, 
uh, will really inform someone that someone doesn't want to be published. You know, this is what really excites uh, me and I think a lot of journalists and that's what I think is fun.